Hi everyone, Michael here. Today on Operation Adventure, we're traveling to a couple of spooky locations in order to celebrate Halloween. It's my favorite day of the year. It's so full of magic and mystery. I just, I wish that every day was Halloween. I'm not even gonna lie. Now, before we set out on our adventure today, I figured why not give you all a fun few facts about Halloween. The first fun fact is that Halloween actually originated from the ancient Celtic festival, Samhain. Now, a lot of people like to believe that Samhain was rooted in darkness and evil. However, that's completely the opposite. Samhain was actually a festival that ended summer and began the harvest season. Granted, they did believe that the veil between this world and the next was at its lowest capacity, which meant they dressed in costume, they lit large bonfires, and they even carved jack-o'-lanterns to ward off all of the evil spirits. In the 18th century, Pope Gregory III designated November 1st as All Saints Day, and the night before was All Hallows Eve. The name would later be changed to Halloween. Halloween made its way to America in the 1800s. However, it wasn't until the 1920s and 1930s before it was popularized with trick-or-treating and parties for adults. It's tradition to carve jack-o'-lanterns out of pumpkins. However, before the Irish came to America, they used to carve jack-o'-lanterns out of potatoes and turnips. They would carve these little faces and they would leave them outside of their doors, hoping to ward off all of the evil spirits. For the last fun fact, there are countless movies and television programs with Halloween in the title. However, did you know that this was not popular until 1978 when a small group of independent filmmakers got together and made a horror classic? That classic was Halloween. Since we have our fun Halloween trivia out of the way, I figured let's embark on our journey. Our first stop is the Old Charleston Dell, located in Charleston, South Carolina. Then we're gonna travel up the coast to Polly's Island and visit Alice Flagg's grave. The stories won't end there though, because afterwards I'm gonna tell you what happened after I visited these spooky locations. We're at the Old City Jail, and the Old City Jail was constructed in 1802 and was in operation until 1939. It obviously housed some of South Carolina's most infamous. And yeah, I will say it's warm out there, but I came in here and it got cold and I had to come and put a jacket on. I'm not gonna go inside, but I don't see any no trespassing signs anywhere. So I am gonna walk around the perimeter. There's also a cop outside. So I'm, I feel safe when it comes to that, you know? Um, but yeah, let's, let's walk around this bad boy. There's a family walking around looking at this place. So, I don't feel so sketched out. But don't worry, my luck, they'll be like some serial killer family. <laughs> not only my luck. Check this out. You know what, let me get out of the shot. How about I get out of the shot and show you what I'm seeing? All right, is this place haunted? Um, on a scale of one to 10, it's a 21. I was initially skeptic of it, but just because like, it might be an old building, there might be a lot of history to it, but I've been walking around this building and I kid you not, I've seen something behind me several times through like the viewfinder up here. And I'm like, wait, and I jump because it always startles me. So is it haunted? Yeah, I do believe it is. Now, before I go, I wanted to talk about the Bonnie and Clyde of South Carolina, John and Lavina. Fisher. As story goes, the two owned a house six miles outside of Charleston where travelers could stay. And one day, a man by the name of John Peoples approached the house. First, he was told there was no vacancies. However, Lavina invited him in for some tea. He wasn't a fan of tea, but he didn't want to be rude. So while she wasn't looking, he poured it out. Over the next few hours, she began to interrogate him because he wasn't passing out. See, the tea had been poisoned and it wasn't affecting him. So it was frustrating her. And he 
got a little suspicious of it, especially when she came to him and said, hey, you know what? We actually do have a room for you to stay at. He was so suspicious that night that he slept in the chair and not the bed and was woken up by a loud crash. That crash was the bed falling into a pit. He then escaped out the window and alerted authorities. It is said that the bodies of 30 or so people were found underneath the house afterwards. Now, I've got to admit, I kind of question this story. If there had been a murder house, why wouldn't it still be around? And that might sound very morbid, but we tend to encapsulate where really morbid things happen at. So I, I wonder, I, I've always questioned that. They were eventually tried and persecuted for their actions. Now that's not the end of the story. It is said that Lavina, before she threw herself off the gallows, announced to everyone, and please don't quote me directly, that if anyone had a message to send to the devil, she would be seeing him. So to give it to her, she would give it to him. Uh, just a little creepy. Just a very, very creepy. So yeah, that's said to have happened here. This place though, this place does give me the creeps. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And it's been fun, but it's time to get out of here. I'm not gonna lie. Time to get out of here. Time to get out of Dodge. Hi everyone, we're on Polly's Island located on the coast of South Carolina and we're hanging out at Alice Flagg's grave. You might not know who Alice Flagg is, however, you might know who Alice of Hermitage is. Alice grew up at Hermitage, that was the family home's name, born in the early 19th century and when she reached the age around 15 or 16, she met a guy who was in a lower class than she was. Her brother completely disapproved and when the guy asked her to marry him, her brother got so infuriated that he sent her down to Charleston to an all-girl boarding school. While at the boarding school in Charleston, Alice contracted malaria and fell into a comatose state, and her brother brought her back home. Upon her arrival, her brother realized she had been keeping a secret. She had, in fact, kept the ring that her lover had given her, and she had it tied around her neck. Her brother, really irritated, took the ring and threw it into the marsh so that it would never be found again, and it said, that Alice still walks these grounds looking for her ring. Now, like any good ghost story, this one comes with a ritual. We're gonna start at the bottom right here of the grave marker, and we're gonna walk around counterclockwise six times. Then we're gonna turn around and walk clockwise six times, stopping at the letter A, and then we're gonna put something down on the grave marker. This is said to bring us good luck, and it's also said that Alice will come visit us. Ready to begin? One. Pocket. So, put down a quarter. 
The drive from Charleston to Polly's Island is not a relatively long drive. It's usually about an hour and a half. That day I was driving from Charleston up to Garden City, which is a little bit further than Polly's Island, probably a good 20 to 30 minutes. So when I got to Garden City, I was completely zonked. I needed a nap, but it was roughly around five o'clock when I got there and I knew that if I napped, I would not be able to sleep that night. So I forced myself to stay up. Then around 8, 8.30, I started hearing weird noises throughout the house. I, I'm not even exaggerating. It sounded like someone was opening chips and walking through the house. There was even a moment where it sounded like someone had shut a closet door. I kid you not. So I did what any millennial would do and I got on social media and I, I said, look here, if I go missing, this is what I did. I completely did it. It's a little unnerving, I'm not gonna lie. I was very jumpy that night, granted, I could have been jumpy from the lack of sleep and really needing to sleep, or the house could have been haunted. Alice Flagg or Lavina could have followed me back home. Granted, I don't think it would have been Lavina because I would have gotten, but it could have totally been Alice. I will say, when I got ready to go to bed that night, I said, I don't know who is here. I don't really care. You're more than welcome to stay or you can leave, but I'm going to bed, so good night. And if you're here tomorrow, We'll chat. And then I slept all throughout the night. No crazy dreams or anything. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you're enjoying your Halloween. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell button beside the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified every time we post a new video here on the channel. Also, comment down below. Do you think that it was the lack of sleep that was making me jumpy? Or was there a ghost in the house? And if there was a ghost in the house, who was it? Was it Alice Flagg or was it Lavina? Let me know. I am here today in this old jail. And I was filming and someone just snuck up on me and scared the crap out of me. It's someone who works here, I guess. <laughs> I jumped and I was like, ooh. Rarely does that happen. I wish that someone had been filming it. All right, it is 11.30 at night, I do realize that, but it's time for a story time just in case I disappear. Now, I do realize that I'm that basic white guy. As much as I'm like, I would not go for it, like, I, I hear the noise, I wouldn't go for it. I clearly do, because I did it today. I've been working on a series called Halloween Documented. It's a part of Operation Adventure. You can go to operationadventure.org slash Halloween Documented and see some of the stuff. In fact, we have one episode where a few friends and I went into this old creepy factory a few years ago and we heard footsteps. It was the gnarliest thing ever. And then I also have two episodes from when I went to Southport in Bergal. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that was a real, <laughs> that was a real jump right there. <laughs> I'm on edge tonight. Anyway, if you've seen my previous story earlier today, then you know when I was filming at the Old City Jail, someone walked up behind me and scared the living crap out of me. Well, as I'm walking the perimeter, and I didn't go inside, I just walked around the Old City Jail, and I'm filming, and I was filming with this camera, so, like, whenever it's out and about, it looks like this. A couple times that I, like held the camera up, I started talking, and then it was like I saw someone, like, behind me, and then I would, like, jump and be a little, like, cautious, because, I mean, it doesn't matter how much you vlog, and especially in public, like, it always is a little awkward and weird, not gonna lie, and then with getting back into it, it's, I'm having to relearn things and not be so awkward, on camera yeah it's it's a whole process but that kept happening to me today and I have been afraid to watch the footage so I'm very curious to see if I caught anything on camera now it's gonna get worse because I left the old city jail and where did I go oh yeah I went to a cemetery and performed a ritual that it's supposed to bring good luck but uh, I keep hearing things in the house and 
you know, I, that it can have that luck back. I, I wanted good luck, not hearing weird things, hearing the ice maker, like, drop ice and jump. It, no, no, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, I did this ritual several times because I had to, you know, get the wide of it, and then I also had to get the close up. we do to get the content what the, what in the world i need to stop